Hey guys, DJ Sam with us here. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we have the number one Axie Infinity player in there. But before we get stuck into it, make sure you like this video, click subscribe and turn that bell notification on and enjoy. What are you wanting to do when you're older? You're obviously 17, very young, a lot to do. Is, it, is this competitive uh, gaming up your sleeve or what is it? Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, because to be honest, if you'd asked me that two years ago before Axie, I probably would have said... I want to go to university, study something uh, to do with economics. Um, not that that's completely off, off the um, plan for now, but I think I'll probably end up taking a gap year, traveling with some of my mates and just yeah, doing Axie, either working remotely for uh, a guild or something like that, or just yeah, following the competitive gaming or even content creation. Got to start recording a couple of YouTube videos again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know uh, a lot of people actually hold out for your videos and uh, as soon as they see one uploaded, they uh, they all jump in it as quickly as possible. They're like, what can I learn? What does Indes know that I don't know? What's the meta? <laughs> what can I flip? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly <laughs> right, exactly right. Um, so it looks like esports is going to be uh, hopefully a big thing for you and I think you are definitely on the right track. Um, so obviously once, I don't know what COVID is like there, but once everything opens up, uh, properly with esports, are you planning to do some traveling to go play basically in person at LAN events or are you, are you, you going to stick down that path? Obviously you are doing the gap here though. Uh, what are your plans for the, the tournament side of things for esports? Yeah, I would really love if, uh, there, there'd be some esports lands for Axie would definitely attend. I think, um, there's the NFT New York coming up, unfortunately, uh, America closed their borders for England at least. Uh, so probably won't be able to go along there, but yeah, anything Axie meetup wise would definitely be up for. Yeah, I literally asked G-Host last week and he's keen to get these big events uh, store, uh, sorted or the tournaments and stuff. He's just literally waiting for, for unfortunately, COVID. And I think I'm also yeah. locked in, in my country as, as well. So I, I understand because otherwise I'd be in New York in November for the event. Um, what does a typical day look like for Indes? 17 years old, I could imagine what I'd be doing, but uh, what did, uh, <laughs> what's the typical day look like for you? So I, I wake up. I'll eat, I'll go to school, get back from school. Um, then normally I'll have either a coaching session or an Axie GG practice session to get to school work or, or whatever to do in the evening. And then I'll either be breeding Axies on a call or helping or setting something up for my scholarship as well, which I do with uh, three mates of mine. Okay, so basically it's it's school nine to five like during the day and then whenever you have spare time, it's a lot of Axie thing, whether you're coaching or your mates with scholarships or anything like that. Yep, pretty much because uh, at the moment for the last couple of years, I've, I've been injured, so I haven't been able to uh, play sport. I used to play a lot of basketball, uh, but tore my ACL, then um, got cartilage damage in my toe, and then after that, Ooh. I... Um, stretched a nerve in my i stretched my perineal nerve so been out for, out of action for a bit now um <laughs> but hopefully once once that's back i'll be able to do a bit more sport as well so basically you're very um injury prone or like you you get injured a lot unfortunately recently yeah the... <laughs> yes are you a clumsy person or was it just unfortunate because of sports I'm uh, I'm just really tall. I, I oh, had okay. Severs disease when I was younger. So my bones grew too quickly for my tendons. So I was a bit more oh, susceptible wow. to, to picking up injuries, unfortunately. Hence why you're playing basketball, I assume you'd be f six foot plus <laughs> or something. Yeah, I'm six four. Yeah, six so, four at um, 17. Wow. Yeah, no pretty, you playing. pretty tall. I'd, I, yeah, I'd be playing basketball as well if I could. <laughs> <laughs> um, next question we have is how many hours do you play Axie a day or the Axie environment? And also a follow-up to that would be if someone wants to go pro or go heavy at Axie Infinity, what would you recommend how many hours they put in and get, get the knowledge under their belt? Okay, so that's that's a tricky one because at the moment, um, I probably only actually play arena every other day or every three days. Um, when I do play, I play for an hour, hour and a half and just push back up into the top 20, top 10 sort of range. Um, but for anybody that's looking to improve and, and go pro or play competitively, I would say that you're probably looking at around an hour and a half a day, at least for arena. Um, I used to play 45 minute sessions and then two of those a day uh, when trying to push up. But thankfully, the good thing about Axe is that once you do get to a point where you've played enough, 
uh, you are able to memorize a lot of the calculations and things like that. So as long as you're um, good enough with the teams that you like playing, you can come back to it after a week or so. And it's not like another game where you lose the mechanical skill or something like that and you have to play more actively. Um, it is quite good in that aspect. So you're nearly at the stage because you are the top 100, if not, you're probably more so the top 50, top 20. It's not now how many games you can get in to get more points. It's strategically, you're like, okay, I'm going to play this many games or enough just to get those points or stay where you need to and then um, and then play at the right times as well. Yep, pretty much. And it's also, um, if you're pushing as well, it's a good thing to play at similar sorts of times in the day or at least when you're playing at different times um, to get to know who's playing at that sort of, time of the day often oh, yeah. even this season with so many people around you will fa see the same sort of faces um and of course that requires you to know how to play those matchups or play the same sort of team um so that's one that's always fun to face the same guy five or six times over a couple of days and learn how you can make little about plays in that matchup Okay, so guys, if you ever hit the top 100, top 50 area, you are versing similar people, obviously, because there's only a niche amount. So you, you can sort of learn their names, learn their cards, the way they play. Make sure you write things down and you can uh, sort of get the edge up on them if you, if you put in the time and effort. Um, very, very interesting there. Uh, another one is tips for new players and tips for people who want to go pro. So we'll start off with, if you're a new player, what would your first recommendations is? You've heard about Axie online. You're like, what do I do? How do I get involved? What would your tip be for like what Axies to pick or how to sort of get your Axie Infinity journey started? All right. So, um, there's definitely a lot of good YouTubers that you can go to just for your initial research. Um, I usually suggest Axie on the moon. Uh, I would <laughs> go for it for a little plug of my own channel as well, if you're interested. Um, but yeah, you really want to make sure that you've got a base understanding. What kind of game it is? Am I going to enjoy playing this sort of game? You don't want to just go into it thinking, oh, I can make a nice return. I'm going to play it purely for that because you might find that card games aren't for you. And, and that's the thing. Actually, at the moment, it is quite a niche. So unless a card game is something that you enjoy, probably not the game for you. It is quite grindy at the start with adventure. Uh, but once you are past that, you know Axie is the game for you. I would definitely suggest um, making sure that your first team is balanced. You've got to have a nice rounded uh, approach. You've got to have enough damage from at least two of the three of the rock, paper, scissors. So that's bird beast, not bird beast, bird aqua, beast bug, or plant reptile. Normally having enough beast bug is the most important thing, as most opponents will have a plant uh, tank. And of course, you need to get through that in every matchup. And then, yeah, you can follow a couple of the more popular meta teams, uh, Double Aquas, Bird Beast, Terminator Reptile, that sort of thing. But normally, if you are coming in on a budget, you just need to hit enough energy gain, rounded damage, and then a little bit of outplay potential mixed in here and there. And there's a lot of good videos that will show different strategies that you can take little bits from and give, it, give uh, the team building your own go. Yeah, so basically uh, you need to have an all-rounded team there. Make sure you don't just have three aquas off the start. Do a little bit of research yeah. before you jump into Axie Infinity. Make sure you understand the, the tokenomics and basically you know what a plant is. It basically in nine times out of ten will be a tank. So you guys want to just make sure you, you do a bit of research before you start investing in the game. Don't come in for money and then be really well balanced and know some of the cards so you're not like scraping for energy and uh, you know what's sort of roughly what's going on. I think uh, a lot of the times that I first started, I not hear about other people they get so excited about the game you're like i just need a zero breed and and a plant and then something else i don't know and then you sort of invest yeah. in all these zero breeds knowing that zero breed is nothing to do with basically fighting or the pvp side of things but uh it's <laughs> something completely different <laughs> um there is a very popular question which i'm going to ask is this is sort of like uh there's no real answer to this but we'll see if you might have one do you have okay a favorite card like out of all the cards i know it has to be comboed but do you have one card where you're just like i really like what that does that's that is a tricky one um huh there's sort of different approaches i could take for it um i've always liked uh kaku has been a move i've used across lots of teams uh that's probably a more common one now so if i was to go for something a bit more um underground almost not not the most popular <laughs> um probably be uh gravelant i would say i think that's one that um we don't see as much play in arena uh, until really the terminators took over and then there's a middling rank range where you either play a terminator or you play a gravelant 
Um, but in top arena, at least, it's never really been the sort of move that you can use. But in tournaments, Gravelant is an amazing counter pick and also creates lots of mind games in the tournament play. So I'd say that's the one uh, that I've definitely liked using over the course of my Axie career. Yeah, Gravelant is a nightmare. I can I've definitely vouch for that. I've, I've seen players <laughs> and myself just sit there and you're like, Gravelant, you're like... Yep, there goes another round. Can't do anything. It is a deadly card, that's for sure, especially against Terminators. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, your least favorite card. I could actually have a guess of what it would be. Um, I could, if you wanted, I'll guess first and see if I'm right. Is, yeah, it, sw let's... Sw <laughs> is it Sweet Party? <laughs> Ooh. See, it depends. Again, I say least favorite for me. Uh, Sweet Party, yeah, that's just one that you, you can never really play. Same as uh, Ants would fall into that. Um, but if we're going one that I most dislike just based on, um, really Carrot would be the one for me. And, and that's mainly because the misconception that uh, people thought it was the best plant card for a long time. Lots of new players were sucked into playing it, uh, where there were perhaps other options that would have been around the same price range, if not cheaper, that would have helped them out a bit more. Um, and that actually came up in a video I made probably about a month ago uh, now. But of course, Axie's got 1.2 million daily active users or something crazy like that. Is, so I doubt that video has made much of a, of a change to the general opinion. Yeah, I actually saw that video and uh, you were very convincing in that and it sort of does make sense. But it, I remember it was a very, very popular and everyone was using it and no one would buy a plant without it. And then your video came out <laughs> and then things sort of slowly changed to the people who uh, who did watch that video. Um, it's a hair. The, I guess I would even say close to the next favorite question is everyone wants to be the best. It's very addictive, Axie Infinity. They just, I know you probably run multiple teams, but... Uh, what is your current team? If you want to say, it's entirely up to you. Um, uh, what are you running right now? Well, you can see on AxiZone, uh, the one that I'm using in Arena, so I might as well share it. Uh, yep. The one that I've got right now has a eggshell, um, hair, balloon, peacemaker bird at the back. Um, I think I've shown it on my YouTube channel a couple of times, so anybody that's watched will recognize the back liner. Um, then the mid liner is a Biden's Gravelant zigzag cactus plants it's a bit of a new uh, sort of meta build i can't theory built it um, but didn't know how to build breed it there weren't really anything any any anywhere near similar to it on the marketplace um so i messaged a friend of mine uh yak or what the moose um he's a breeder he's got thousands of axes so i figured he might have something close to it um and lo and behold five days later popped out that axie <laughs> and uh yeah been using it ever since so the reason that one's quite good is currently uh grass snake is very popular it's very very strong in the current meta um so people play backdoor builds with grass snakes so of course biden's handy little counter there um and then the tank is a more of an aggressive plant it's got sandal beach uh hot button serious and that's there just to help me get a bit more damage because the midliner is quite light on it Okay, so you got basically bird, plant, plant. You don't see that very often. Obviously, I notice when uh, you scale up through the MMR, if you say everyone starts at 1,200, it's sort of uh, you hit a wall when you get to certain sort of areas because you'll see, say, a lot of beasts and a lot of birds at first, and then you'll go to like around 1,800 MMR. Then you'll start hitting a few more termies slowly, and then you'll have to change up your team slightly. And then 2,400, 2,800, you're sort of heading into the, the top area. Uh, when you were leveling up from the start of the the tournament of this season of season 18 did you start with a similar build to that or have you changed your team as, as you've leveled up um i think i was actually using a budget team i was planning on making a video um with a budget team i see already made a tweet a while back um i can't remember who it was in response to but yeah basically that you could play a budget team and do fairly well um so i picked one up for floor and was just pushing my way up with that um but yeah, normally if you if you want to take it really hard and you want to push up as, as fast as possible, definitely changing your team up as you move up is what you want to do. Um, it's not as important nowadays because you know, the seasons are so long that you can, as long as you haven't got a team that gets hard counted by what's popular at that rank, you can move through uh, just by being better than the people that are around you if you're supposed to be higher in MMR. Um, but yeah, if you're struggling at your MMR, can't speak struggling at your mmr then you definitely want to um swap up to a team that does well against what's popular and as you said uh bird beast or, or even double aqua is very popular uh in the lowering ranks and then you get to a point where it's terminators everywhere 
double reptiles or or beast terminator that sort of thing um and then i think past that as you said you start getting into not meta builds but some more unique builds people have got these things that they've picked up on the marketplace for cheap and they've tested them in arena and they found out that they're solid um and then yeah 2600 2800 you start to get into more of the hyper meta stuff the double poisons the keep money teams that sort of thing yeah speaking of um basically the budget team uh, for this game, I could literally come in from the outside. You can literally come in and say, here's $10,000, $20,000. I'm going to buy the best of the best <laughs> axes. How much do you g put it down to skill-based and like learning your cards compared to basically the mon money side of things? Now, you did say you did a, bu a budget team, uh, but what, how would you rank the, the more so uh, the skill-based to like the, the, the money? It's tricky because I think Arena is the one that you could almost argue is the, um, the least... Or, or you need the least money to start because you only really need one team. And um, there's been lots of examples throughout Axie um, where players, they've picked up this niche build for cheap and then they've risen to the top of the ladder with it. I think the guy that won season 13 um, actually had a team of floor Axies, uh, but he'd sort of picked them up over a couple of weeks periods he picked something that was new worked well together and he managed to push up to number one now this is harder uh, nowadays because you know there's such volume of breeding and everything like that that normally when something becomes uh, known to be a good combo it, it's quickly uh, rises up in price starts to be bred more you can't really get hold of it um, but it's definitely still possible if you're ahead of the curve uh, for me, this season, I managed to pick up some nice Biden plants for around 0 0.12, 0 0.15 nice. uh, back when the market was up a bit higher. And now you see the floor at like 0 0.4. So as long as you're ahead a bit, you can get up there. Uh, but yeah, I'd say skill versus monetary, probably a bit of RNG you want in there as well. Um, I'd say there's definitely around 50% is, is for your skill. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do wrong in an Axie match. There are ways to outplay the opponent but that's largely limited uh, by RNG of card draw and things like that. Now that can uh, make the game a bit more random and allow you to recover in harder matchups, but it can also mean that you lose matchups that you should have won. So it's really difficult to put a number on that versus the team as well. Um, but I'd probably go around, yeah, 50% skill. Then you're looking at either 30 or 20% for your team or RNG. It's got to be split somewhere around that. Um, but there are definitely games that are swung by RNG solely and you can't really do much about it for the yeah. moment, which will hopefully be changed uh, sooner or later. Yeah, I, uh, that's probably the best answer I've heard. I totally agree with you there. You can't realistically go out there, buy the best team and be at the number one spot. And the same vice versa, you, you can't expect to have the best skill and have the worst team in the world. You, you Sometimes you're limited of what you can do. Great answer there. Um, season 18, I think there's a couple of weeks left, if I'm not mistaken. What are your plans for the final weeks? Obviously, all that matters is what position you are towards the end of the season. This is my first season in Axie Infinity, um, so I'm sort of seeing it play out. You've obviously played many seasons before. Uh, how do you sort of play the last couple of weeks, and is it a strategic when you play, and, and so on and so forth? Yes, yeah, so um, normally I only push towards the last week of the season. Some seasons I've been number one, or I make sure I've got a big lead going into the last week of the season. Uh, others I sort of stay lower this season I believe I'm placed around top 20 or so um, really just staying in touch and distance of the guys up top and then last week of the season which I believe is even next week um, I'll start pushing up a bit more aggressively normally three days out I want to be at least top five top three sort of range and not leave too much to do on the last day of the season because of course you set yourself up for a tilt uh, because you're forced <laughs> to play because you, you can't push up you know, you've got to push up that day. You've got to carry on playing games. You might not be in the best mindset and then you can just have the, the whole set of cards tumble down on you. Um, yeah. So, yeah, definitely looking to uh, stretch it out over the last week of the season and try push for the number one. Because I think this season, if I were to win, uh, would put me up top for the most season wins because currently I'm tied with Prathap on three. Uh, so we'd definitely like to sneak up into into the four four arena wins and get up into number one there.
That's absolutely crazy accolades right there, chat. Crazy accolades. Um, we'll, I'll be watching over the next couple of weeks to see where your position goes, and I'm excited to see how it all, all plays out. And as the season comes to an end, uh, I believe there's normally a break, and then the next season starts. Season 19, is there anything you're looking forward to, anything you want to see, uh, anything you want changes like, I don't know, a deep, sort of like um, sort of a, a debuff on the Aquas or anything? What are, your, what are your thoughts for season 19 and what you'd like to see? Yeah, so um, season 19 is actually, I believe, the season that there should be balance changes. The team tend to do uh, balances every other season. Of course, um, this last sort of two seasons period has been very lengthy because uh, of the server issues and whatnot. <laughs> the the off-season was stretched like six weeks, I think. Um, so yeah, we've had a while for this current meta to progress and get to what it is now. Um, so definitely like to see that freshened up a bit uh, with balance changes. And then also, as you said, um, whether it's a change to the stat distribution or something like that, a bit more fundamental. Uh, I would like to see a change to the crit system or morale, um, but it really rides upon whether, um, well, how long V2 is going to be or whether the team with the introduction of esports might consider bringing or tagging V2, V2, V1 along for a bit longer. Really not sure. Um, I, I would think that pr prior to this esports announcement, um, I would have just been expecting, you know, V1 rides its last, uh, life out we go straight into v2 and v1's gone uh, but given the esports announcement i think maybe v2 may have had some more road bumps and we had to push it back we the axi team had to push it back further <laughs> um or it was you know maybe they're considering v1 still existing with v2 whatever happens um i would hope that if it's the latter that we'll see some changes at the end of or well, going into season 19. Uh, well, as far I did speak to Geos over the, about a week ago, he has a similar uh, outlook, uh, depending obviously on many things, but he is looking to rebalance and do a bunch of things like exactly what you've said for season 19. So fingers crossed it goes through. Uh, it is blockchain. It is crypto. Sometimes roadmaps never sort of end up hitting their mark, unfortunately, but uh, we'll have to yep. wait and see. Um, speaking of basically you as a brand and everything like that, obviously you have, I, I believe you got a brand new camera. Um, I know that you're now doing scholarships with your friends, your YouTube content, you're trying to stay on top of things and do school on top of that. I don't know how you do all this, but, uh, hats off to you. Um, <laughs> what is your scholarship program? What is your coaching all about? How do you gel this all together? What is basically Indes and, uh, what's your plans for like the next six months, a year and, and further down the line? All right, so uh, I guess we'll start with the scholarship. Uh, my scholarship, very creatively named, is in Axi Academy. Um, <laughs> I run it with three of my IRL mates, um, brought them in right at the start, and we've been building it out since. We've got around 70 accounts that are split in between the four of us, uh, 20 accounts that are owned by somebody else that we managed for them, one of my Axi friends, and then um, another friend of mine that also we manage their accounts. I think they have a further around 70 um we like to pride ourselves upon giving solid teams coaching our scholars and also having a couple of incentive systems to, to try and basically gear them up to either buy their own teams or be fed into the xcgg uh team where they can take on a bit more of the esports and competitive side um and then my coaching i do basically just private coaching here and there whenever i'm free uh, over the summer i was doing up to three or four sessions a day wow pretty knackering uh but now of course with school i've had to scale back on that a bit and um, there's actually going to be an announcement coming soon about uh Axie gg coaching where i have coached or, or helped uh, some of our top players to learn how to coach people uh, better. Some of them previously coached, some of them uh, are new to it in Axie at least. Um, and they're essentially going to take on the torch from where I've been doing loads of sessions. They're going to take some of the load off my back. Um, and then I'll probably only do one or two sessions a week, if that's uh, whilst I'm still at school. Then, of course, the YouTube has been on the back burner for the last three weeks or so. I uh, reacted quite badly to the, the COVID vaccine, so I was dead for about a week. And then I had school starting up again, so I had to be all prepared with that. Um, but yeah, next week I'm looking to start, record some more YouTube videos. Um, and then past that, we've got the tournaments. Uh, I represent Axe GG. We've been with them for a while. Um, Chief, the 
uh, owner or, or one of the owners of Axie GG. Uh, somebody that I've known for years now. He used to manage the team I first played for in Clash Royale when I was probably 12 or 13. Uh, so I've known him for a good almost five years. And um, yeah, we play in all of the tournaments. Our players tend to um, be the majority up in that top eight, top 16 sort of range. I think last tournament we had four of eight uh, in the top eight. Wow. And yeah, that's pretty much what I do outside of that. I coach the team or, or now with the new play, new people coming in, manage to pass that off a bit more to others as well. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much me. I'm trying to scale back a bit what I do in Axis so I can focus a bit more on school, but also stay relevant in that, whether it's through having other people do it for me um, or taking a bit of the work off me um, or just, yes, phasing out of certain things and, and into others. And then would your, say, one to three to five year plan is uh, obviously so many unknowns for one, but are you looking <laughs> at uh, doing a big guild side of things, definitely go heavy in the, the uh, esports, or is it just flip a coin at this yeah, stage? I, I think um, it's difficult to say, as you said, um, but definitely I think guilds will be a massive thing in land play. Uh, as we move towards that. And I would hope that along with esports and hopefully the growth of esports, um, we'll see really not a need, but, you know, a much bigger role for, for guilds. Uh, so I would hope that whether, um, you know, it's, it's a contract or something like that through XCGG, or even if it's just a stake in, in what we're doing, I'd have a nice uh, little thing to fall back on there and be able to um, just explore other aspects. Hopefully the content creation will pick up uh, as I actually record some YouTube videos. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that, that's pretty much it. Uh, just seeing where it goes, making sure that um, I'm doing enough to just keep up with everything in Axie uh, and even other games as well. I think one thing that um, I definitely kicked myself for over the summer was not putting enough time into researching other games or other projects because uh, as we saw, NFT summer, it might not even be over <laughs> yet, uh, was pretty insane. <laughs> Yeah, I it has been a crazy, crazy uh, NFT ride. I think I don't know if we're in a bubble. I don't know. It's it's just absolutely insane that the the figures that are coming out, right? Um, so it sort of brings me to my next question: Is are you looking at other play to earn games? Obviously, you're very heavily focused on school, and then obviously Axie. Uh, is anything that like piques your mind in in the play to earn area, or you're still sort of searching? I would say um, the only one that I've got sort of on a list that I, I want to start looking more into would be Foxy's. Um, I, I missed the initial pre-sale. Uh, lots of people had told me about it. Again, kicking myself, didn't look into it at the time. <laughs> I, I see a um, common theme here of kicking yourself a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, but yeah, recently, well, I know a friend of mine, Dylan, um, who you've probably seen on Twitter, he does all of the dance NFTs, extremely talented. Still now, he does half of what he does. Um, but I started speaking to him more recently, and he's been very big on Vox. He's been encouraging me to take a look into it. So that's something I've definitely going to have a look at when I've got uh, a bit of free time to really delve into it. I don't want to just half ass it. Um, so yeah, other than that, not really anything that um, is on my radar, radar, or at least I think I'd, I'd enjoy um, as much as Axie or even just enough to, to um, put some of my time into. And it's, is it called Voxy, is it, or Foxy? Voxies, yeah, with a V. Oh, um, Voxies, so okay. Spelled, as if it was Foxy's, but with a V in, yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And is that a similar card-based turn game, or...? I think it's more... Um, I, th I read the website the other day. Um, team... What's the name? Team Something Tactics. I think it's an R oh, okay. RPG game. Um, I'm not very clued up on gaming language or anything like that. <laughs> as Even though I, I do play actually competitive, competitively, and I've played Clash Royale before that, I'm really not a gamer of sorts. I pretty yeah. much played sport all the time then couldn't so started playing uh, esports a bit more so yeah don't ask me about anything to do with uh, <laughs> mobas or whatever that means yeah um look uh, that was all the questions i found through uh basically twitter and through the community here guys if you're in the chat please type in a question right now we are coming to the sort go. of end of it somebody in the chat saved me sorry to cut you off but team no. fight tactics that was that was the uh, one that's what i saw yes, on the side yes yes don't know okay. what it is but yeah just to help anybody that was confused i mean i don't even know what it is but i've heard the word multiple times so uh yeah <laughs> um this is going to be really random questions so i apologize again it's going to be pretty quick answer them if you want to answer them don't answer if you don't the first one All i've right. seen here is he single wow chat but go for it <laughs> yes i am that uh, does he... not mean 
anything. Just, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, take that for what you will, chat. Um, some insights about floor axes, uh, if you have a little Ooh. bit of a, a thought on the floor axes. Yeah, so um, floor axes are definitely a tricky thing to um, sort of play around. Uh, if you haven't got much experience in axie or you haven't um, done a lot of research, I would suggest uh, steering clear or at least searching for guidance from other people that have been around for longer or even people that do, you know, team building sort of services, if it's within your budget. Um, and if you are a more experienced player, you've played around for a longer time, you will have a bit of an idea of what you're looking for. I generally suggest to um, have a, a class or a sort of an archetype that you are comfortable with, and then you should be able to know what could possibly swap in and out of that and still be viable uh, and potentially cheaper for you. There you go, chat uh next one i see is how many axes do you have um oh god i think at the moment i have about 180 on my main account 100 on my aqua breeding account 50 on a plant breeding account and then about 150 or so on the scholarship breeding account plus however many i've got on scholarships um been breeding a fair bit more recently Yes, I'm 500, something like that. I don't know. A lot. Just a chat. He's got a, a lot. Bit, okay. a he's, got, he's, <laughs> he's got a lot. Um, thoughts on people saying, I know this is your favorite card, Gravelant. Do you think it's too OP wow. or you think it's uh, pretty balanced? I think it's one of the ones that um, it, it feels overpowered. If you have got an all melee backliner, you know, it just completely renders you useless. You can think, oh, why is this even in the game? I can't do anything against this. Um, but the one thing I would say is that the vast majority of Gravelamp builds, if the opponent has one range move, you just auto lose the 1v1. Um, there are other builds like the one that I've been using more recently with the, the Biden zigzag cactus um, gravel that can win if they have one range move. But what you lack is a lot of damage. And that makes it a very difficult thing to build into teams and also means that it's only really effective in certain matchups. So I would say in tournament play, it's one of those niche cards that's very strong. But outside of that, unless the meta is very heavily um, melee oriented, you know, like if Terminators are everywhere, yeah. um, I wouldn't say that Gravelant would be high up on that list because the base stats are very low. So you really don't get anything from it unless you are going to be disabling all of, or if not, at least three of their cards. Yeah, so basically it's up, because of Terminators are so popular right now, I'd say that that's why people are saying it could be OP. But in general, if you don't have melee, melee cards on your, uh, like all four of your cards melee, uh, it sort of is a balanced uh, card, if, and I, I do agree with that for sure. Um, do you have a Mystic Axie? Yes, I um, I have one Mystic Axie because I, I sold my other one at 10 ETH before they completely Ooh. pumped up, which, again, <laughs> kicking myself, summer. <laughs> um, common, common occurrence here, kicking yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so the one that I have was actually a gift from uh, One Day Play, who, who's an OG. He's been around for a while. Um, last July, I think. So that, the floor was probably about 0.8 ETH. Uh, oh, wow. ETH was probably, a, I can't remember what ETH was at, but uh, yeah, very low compared to now. Um, and so yeah, he took a long hiatus from the Axe community. He came back. I started to get to know him a bit more. Uh, but I think main thing was he was happy with um, or sort of wanted some way of rewarding me, I guess, for helping out a lot. Like back then I was always in the Discord. I think I had the most messages in one of the months, helping people <laughs> build teams and everything like that. And uh, yeah, he was at the time and still is a massive whale in Axie. So um, one mystic, no skin off his nose, um, sent it over to me and I'm very thankful for him, for that. And uh, fortunately, with it being a gift, it's probably stopped me from paper handing it because never want to sell it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've managed to hold on to that one. Uh, I had a second one for a time. I flipped two mystics. Uh, one I bought for three ETH and then sold for nine ETH on the pump before last mm -hmm. uh, of mystics. And then I bought in when um, ETH was going high, everything in the Axie uh, space was going down a bit, you know, the normal uh, ebbs and flows of the, the marketplace. And I think I caught it for four ETH and then sold it for, yeah, around 10. And that was just before everything shot up to 35, 36 ETH, whatever it was. St so still, um, still a great flip though, if I must say. Still a great yeah, flip. Yeah, it was, it was a good flip, but of course, 
with it going up um, slightly annoying, but I think I at least cycled some of that back into Axis. Um, so okay. didn't quite sting as much. Perfect. And we'll finish up with the last couple of questions is, uh, one, do you have any siblings if you want to answer? And two, what do your parents think of this? Okay, so um, I have a brother and a sister. Um, and then my parents, um, they, so of course I, I played Clash Royale before this, so they were already a bit um, sort of understanding of this type of thing, you know, with not being a career in Clash Royale, but at least, you know, you can make money on the internet. This does exist. Yeah. Um, Axie at the start, you know, I, I, it was over lockdown I got into it. So um, a long sort of five month period. So they didn't really know all that much about it at the time. Uh, but then when everything started bumping, when ETH, you know, went up, it was sort of the turned around and said, uh, ask me what I've been doing for myself. And I was like, oh, I made five grand. And that was when <laughs> they sort of started speaking to me a bit more about it. Um, and my dad actually bought in in March into Axis. He had, he had a spare grand and he was like, okay, what should I do with this? Um, kind of get to basically get to know the sort of stuff that I was doing. Bought into Axis at $9 when it was up high. It then went down a bit. But he held on to it, learned from some of my mistakes. <laughs> He's not kicking um, himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then um, I think he ended up selling it around $18. So he got a nice little uh, bit up, of course, got a lot higher since. Obviously, um, yeah. But he was, he was still pretty happy with, with how he did. I think he ended up um, through various flips. He started with that grand, put it into Elite Coin, 1337, um, that 5X or so. Then access, he got a nice double. So I think he ended up with around ten thousand pounds. So oh, wow. he Perfect. was very happy. Uh, still messages me every day. Oh, why is access this high? <laughs> I shouldn't have sold that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, they're very on board with it. I think the main thing for them is that they'd they'd like me to have a second, you know, option. Uh, I'm still going to um, apply to a, a uni spot and defer it for the year. Mm -hmm. um when going traveling you know I, I didn't think it's that likely of an option at the moment but of course this is crypto it's volatile not completely set on this being you know the rest of my life or setting me up because I'm not in the position to do that because i i don't have enough in stable coins unfortunately yet um so yeah that could still happen uh, for me and i think for my parents yeah as long as i've i've not completely disregarding school and doing really badly at school that sort of thing they're, they're pretty on board with it i mean that's a pretty good family if you ask me because a lot of uh when you first learn about crypto first of all people think it's fake and it's fake money and all this sort of thing and uh yeah. it's good that they're pretty supportive compared to some other people uh that i've met throughout throughout the years and uh crypto can be a crazy thing and you, you see normal people every day become millionaires overnight you see people get scammed and stuff but uh, i'm glad they're supporting you and i'm glad that you've you've got like your head screwed on properly because you're like i know i still need school as a backup it's it still makes sense i can't just go all into crypto and go i get a ferrari tomorrow so uh <laughs> it's, it's it's good a good head on your shoulders um look i think that's all the time we have for here but look what do you want to shout out for your social media i look forward to your journey ahead as well i can't wait to see what happens at the end of this season if you literally need anything uh please reach out to me uh whenever if you need to promote anything or or just any anything in general basically i'm here to help and uh, i love seeing your journey so if you want to shout out your socials and nay can you please put your socials in the chat as well I really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, for me, I I'm on Twitter, uh, Indes underscore AxieGG. And I also have YouTube as well, which is just Indes. And I will be uploading a bit more on that, looking to record <laughs> next week. Hopefully, I have about three or four videos that, that I've been planning. So should, not going to promise every other day videos as I have them, <laughs> probably the other videos. Uh, but looking to go, you know, at least one or two videos a week uh, from now on. Perfect. There you go, chat. Now he's going to get his socials and put in. Make sure you go follow him on all his social media. He provides great content. He is the top player for a reason. He does his research. He puts in the hours. You've seen it. He provides value to a lot of the people. You saw him. He was on Discord for months doing the most messages. Take a leaf out of his book. If you want to be like Indes, uh, follow the path that he has. And, mate, I really do appreciate you coming on. Again, please reach out whenever you need something. I'm more than happy to help. And uh, we'll be in contact, my man. Sounds good. Thanks for having me on. Uh, hope you have a good rest of your evening. And uh, yeah, have a good one, everybody in chat. Perfect. Thank you, Andes. Appreciate it, buddy. Cheers. Bye. There we go, chat. That was Indes, basically the number one player, I would say, or close to. 
uh, definitely right up there. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys learned from the best. He does put in the hours. You can see that he does He does the card research. He's, he's not just going, ah, oh, this will roughly be the answer. This is roughly what I'll hit. He is doing the research. And um, I look forward to see how he's going to finish off season eight.